Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a homemade rational complex equation. We have z cubed plus z and all of that is divided by z plus i and that is equal to negative 6. And we're going to be solving for z values. And I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to use cross multiplication. We get z cubed plus z equals negative 6z minus 6i. Let's put everything on the left hand side. z cubed plus 7z plus 6i is equal to 0. This is a cubic equation. Do you want to use the cubic formula? Maybe. It's probably going to be complicated. I haven't tried it. You can go ahead and definitely give it a try. But I want to do something else. And that something else has to do with the numbers, the coefficients. One of the things, and I think what they call is you should have an eye for these things. And you can gain that by practicing a lot, by looking at solutions of these problems, so on and so forth. That will become easier over time. Now, here's what I'm talking about. When I look at the coefficients, and I'm going to ignore i, even though it's a constant, 1, 7, and 6. What do you think? 1 plus 6 is equal to 7, right? Great. So that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to replace z with something like this, iw. So my hope is that this equation is going to have solutions that are integer multiples of i, like 2i, 5i, negative 8i, whatever, something like that. And we can find out by substitution. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see what happens. iw to the third plus 7 times iw plus 6i equals 0. And i cubed is negative i, so that's going to give us negative i w cubed plus 7iw plus 6i equals 0. And one thing that we can do here that's going to be very helpful is taking out negative i. Because i is a common factor as well as negative i. This gives us w cubed. And the reason why I want to take out negative i instead of positive i is I want to make the leading coefficient 1. Okay, that's going to be a minus 7w minus 6. And the whole thing is equal to 0. i does not equal 0, so we can divide both sides by negative i. And this gives us w cubed minus 7w minus 6 equals 0. Now, what does this equation tell you? Again, looking at the numbers, 1, negative 6, and ne 1, negative 7, and negative 6, I can safely say that, okay, if I add 1 and negative 7, I get negative 6. In other words, the sum of the odd coefficients is equal to the evens, which means w equals negative 1 is a solution, which means w plus 1 is a factor by factor theorem. All right, that's an important finding because we are going to divide this polynomial by w plus 1. Let's go ahead and do it. w plus 1 divided into w cubed minus 7w minus 6. If w1 is actually a factor, then the remainder should be 0, right? Okay, let's find out. With long division, you could also do the factoring method, kind of split up, which I almost always use, but I'm kind of leaning towards long division these days. Anyways, as long as it's not taking too long. w goes into w cubed, w squared times, then I'm going to go ahead and distribute that w cubed plus w squared, and then I have to negate and add. In other words, I need to subtract. That gives me negative w squared minus 7w. That's going to go negative w times. That'll be negative w squared minus w. Negate and add one more time. This will become negative 6w. Bring down the negative 6, and then w plus 1 is going to go into this negative 6 times, and that'll finalize it because the remainder as I said earlier, will be 0. Make sense? Great. So that's basically what it is. And now we have another factor. So our expression w cubed minus 7w minus 6 was factored into w plus 1 times w squared minus w minus 6. 
No matter what you do, you can factor this expression. Rational root theorem is definitely another one to look for. And now w squared minus w minus 6, do you think that's also factorable? Let's give it a try. We can try to find two numbers whose product is negative 6 and whose sum is negative 1. And those numbers are negative 3 and 2, right? So now we can write this as w plus 1 times w minus 3 times w plus 1. 2. Awesome. And this is equal to 0. Right? So, what happens? We got the solutions. W equals negative 1, W equals 3, and W equals negative 2. We already talked about negative 1. That's actually how we got the factor W plus 1, right? But from here, we have to back substitute. What are, what are, the, what are the Z values, right? Well, Z is equal to IW, so all we have to do is multiply these by i to get z. In other words, z could be negative i, z could be 3i, z could be negative 2i. That's what I meant by if the solutions are integer multiples of i, then we can do this, right? In this case, that happens to be the case. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative solution, which is I call the second method, because that's how this problem actually came about. That's what I meant by homemade, because if you kind of have an idea and turn it into a problem, and then I realize, uh-oh, this allows for another method, which is cool. Great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the numerator before cross-multiplying, of course. The numerator is factorable. I can take out a z, and after that, this might not look good to you, but it should actually look very good to you because z squared plus 1 is a sum of two squares and it is it's factorable in the complex world or using complex or imaginary numbers. And that's what it is. If you replace one with negative i squared, you'll have a better idea. This will look as a difference of two squares. Make sense? So now we can write this as z plus i times z minus i. And then that is divided by z plus i and that's equal to negative 6. Now at this point, you can go ahead and factor out, or should I say cancel out? Cancel out z plus i. But we do, we do need the requirement. z should not equal negative i. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that, so don't worry. We'll save that for future use, okay? And then after that, under those conditions, we have z squared minus iz equals negative 6, and then we can put everything together. Since this is quadratic, you don't need any tricks or substitution. Just use the quadratic formula. Keep it simple, right? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is i squared, minus 4ic, which is minus 24, all over 2. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 24 equals negative 25. The square root of negative 25 is plus minus 5i. So this becomes i plus minus 5i divided by 2, and that means i plus 5i divided by 2, which is 3i, or i minus 5i divided by 2, which is negative 2i. So it looks like we found the same solutions as before with one problem. This condition tells us, hey, z cannot equal negative i. Is that the case? Of course, because then you'll have 0 over 0. That's undefined, right? I mean, I, we agree 0 to the power 0. We don't agree on that, on the fact that it's equal to 1. And I made a separate video about it, by the way. Anyways, in this case, if you take a good look, you're going to realize, hey, z equals negative i is not going to work. So I have to go back to the first method and scratch this out. So we end up with two solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.